Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank for the kind invitation. It gives me a, pos a possibility to speak about here yeah, about quantum correlations. Well, working on applications of non-commutative Banner function spaces to quantum theory, I wanted to understand the nature of quantum correlations. In other words, to understand quantum correlations as a result of quantization. So the plan of my talk is that I will start with clear picture. The picture we have in classical probability theory. And then I will explain to you why I need quantum probability, so I should do quantization. Then uh, it is necessary to say a few words why I will not speak about Bell inequalities. And then to understand, as I just told you, the nature of quantum correlations, it is necessary to understand what is losing during the quantization procedure, losing from the classical picture. Then, uh, because the set of states of uh, cyst algebra has uh, very specific geometric characterization, specific geometrical characterization means that the set of in general, non commutative cyst algebra is not a simplex. It will be necessary to use the composition theory, which sometimes is called integral representation. Well, generally, my term terminology is taken from Ola Bratelli and Derek Robinson book. And then I will speak about two measures of quantum correl correlations. The first just coefficient of quantum correlations, and then few words about entanglement of formation. So this is the plan. As I just told you, we will start with a classical picture, which is very elementary observation taken from any textbook. That for a probability space, we have nicely defined correlation coefficients. Here is two-point correlation function, and it seems that this integrant is the most important. This is just normalization. So the picture is such that we have a nice picture of what is correlated, uncorrelated, anticorrelated, and we have a good measure. And as, as I just told you, this two-point correlation function is playing a crucial role. And because this two-point correlation function is playing such an important role, the natural question is, what is a canonical form of such two-point correlation function? To answer this question, well, it's a simple observation, well, simple notation that it is necessary to use DF for point measure. And then uh, what it, that means, um, uh, that measure has a finite support, it is just a uh, combination of Dirac's measures. But uh, we have the following well now result that any probability measure can be nicely approximated by a positive measure having a finite support. Well, uh, again, following Ola Bratelli and Derek Robinson terminology, well, but it is also, you can find in other books, textbooks. We'll call this property just a weak star, a Riemann approximation property. So, first, we are speaking about classical picture, so we should say something about the big system, or which big system or composite system. It's a system constructed from two subsystems. It gives me a possibility to speak about correlations. And so we have a product structure, standard. And here, let me consider continuous, func in general, complex valued function over this tensor, uh, this product. And the first observation is that because it is very nice in Billion Sister Algebra, 
we can rewrite in that way that this we have this equality and here is a tensor product and just to simplify notation always I will when I will write for example f1 it means this function and as I told you I want to present a canonical form of two-point correlation functions so this subscript is necessary if I want to denote the measure so taking into account weak star Riemann approximation property into this integral we have this equality and uh, the next observation is that here we have a point measure so the x measure which is supported by this point in the product and the marginal of point measure in the classical story is again a point measure so we have this equality so if I put this equality in this formula after a few areas of calculation I'm getting this formula what does it mean it means that any classical because I'm using classical probability theory two-point correlation functions is nothing else but a limit of tensor states so for classical case as it's written here any two-point correlation function of this big composite system is given by a limit of convex combination of product states and this is taken as a basic feature of classical correlation but uh, uh, it is good as a to do a kind of a very small resume namely what we have used we have used the set of probability measures we will say that uh, it is just a set of states on abelian cyst algebra we have used a uh, weak star approxima Riemann approximation property and the fact that a marginal of a point measure is again a point measure so quantization in a sense I will use maybe in more mathematical <laughs> sense so the strategy is that we want to find an encrypted structure for probability space and this route is again elementary and you can find in many textbooks I, here I mentioned Mayer's book and the idea is to produce an algebra and to drop this axiom and in fact we have two choices the first one when you have a probability space to consider the set of all measurable essentially bounded functions over the set and it is again elementary that this set is a commutative for Neumann algebra with well done properties we have a state that is just a linear positive normalized functional and, and so on and it is important that the expected value of that function is just a state we have the second option when omega is, has also a kind of topology so let me assume a compact household, household space that one can consider the set of all continuous complex valued functions over this household space and again this is a nice commutative cyst algebra with identity and uh, then uh, any abelian cyst algebra is of that form and uh, just to have a better connection with probability cal calculus where it is just a household space we have a general again well now result uh, that any function or state is given by this integral so quantization is used in the following sense that by non commutative probability space we'll understand either the pair consisting of von Neumann algebra f von Neumann algebra as a state and a state and the second the second option sista algebra and a state when we are speaking about von Neumann algebra we will uh, additionally assume that the state is a uh, normal so continuous with respect to weak topology or pre-topology 
as I told you a few words about bell inequalities. Okay, okay. Bell inequalities were introduced by Bell and to uh, here express a kind of equality for say classical uh, for variables obeying classical probability calculus. And then it is again it was even mentioned uh, today morning that uh, this kind of e e inequalities were tested and they found to be violated. So the message is that it is extremely important ingredient of theory of quantum correlations because it is a very good indicator of quantum correlation. But as I told you, what I want to understand, I understand quantum correlation just as a result of quantization. And, also, and moreover, I want to get a kind of a measure of this, of quantumness. So, and to achieve these goals, I need quantum probability approach. And because of that, I will not speak about well, inequalities. So, non commutative case. Again, we should start with a big system, composite system, and we have, again, two options, as I just told you. The first one is C algebra case. So to, behind this option, from physical point of view, is Araki Hawkeye approach. And usually, when we are speaking about C algebra, uh, for example, here A1, we are thinking about C algebra, which is generated by concrete observables associated with the first subsystem acting on some uh, fixed. Hilbert space. And in general, when I'm speaking about tensor product of cis algebra, there are plenty of norms. So here I will consider minimal uh, norm. And so we are taking a tensor product to construct a quantum composite system. And this S is standing for a state. But there is important a feature, namely, when we are looking for that from, say, Banach space point of view, so we are, will consider on linear structure, so we can take a dual to that Banach space, consider the algebraic tensor product, and dual to that Banach space, and take the closure with respect to the dual to the minimal norm. And then, we are getting a subspace in the dual to this Banach space. Okay, this is again well-known results which you can find in the first volume of Takasaki book. And we, when we compare with a uh, Neumann algebra case, from the linear structure point of view, the situation seems to be a little bit better. Namely, when we are consider normal states, when we are considering a P dual, then we have here not a subspace of by uh, uh, equality. And the price for that, which should be paced here, we should use very specific norm. Again, it was mentioned during the, this morning, that is so called projective, but projective norm in the operator space sense. This is definition, but it was told in the first lectures. So there was the first difference that, in fact, even from linear structure, uh, states are subs in general subsets in the dual space of uh, associated with a composite system. But then the next question is: We have seen the Tewik star Riemann approximation property was so crucial in the beginning. So one can say what we can say in the non-competitive case. This example is extracted from Cadiz and Ingros book. It is very elementary. It is an exercise. And it is the first situation when we consider non-trivial situation. So we have two, by two, uh, uh, two Hilbert spaces of dimension two. We are taking a tensor product. On the, on the tensor product, we can consider a vector state where a vector is 
Today, morning was called a bell state, but in physics, fully entangled state. This state is calling so down. But nevertheless, we have such factor in the tensor product of these two Hilbert spaces. And the question was then how big is the distance of this distinguished state from, say, the closure of convex hull of these simple tensors. And even, you know, this is <laughs> the dimension is two, so we are playing a game with two by two matrices. The result is rather surprising that we have rather big number. So you can, s but uh, to understand what I told when, told when I was speaking about linear structure, what is essential here that when we are speaking about states, we should also equip on a space with a uh, order. And exactly the order is responsible in a sense from, for, for this result. So the message is the following. There is no hope for, say, quantum counterpart for non commutative integration, sorry, of weak Riemann approximation property. And again, having that, this is just a definition. What does it mean? Separable states. Separable states is a closure of convex hull of simple tensor tensors of states, and the rest is a subset of entangled states. When you have the second option, you are doing exactly the same game, but uh, the difference is that here the closure should be taken with respect to the uh, projective uh, operator space projective uh, norm. Another difference, I told you that we should, should uh, look for all properties which are lost during the quantization. Uh, what was important in the first part that the marginal of a point measure is again a point measure or in physical terms, reduction of a pure state is again a pure state. This is again an example uh, writing in the spirit of Cadiz and Ingros example. So again, we are taking two Hilbert spaces, finite dimensional. I have for simplicity put here the dimension equal say n, and again we are considered very specific, so in physical terms, fully entangled state. Oh, so the state of this form, where EI and FI are just basis in corresponding Hilbert spaces. And now we are making reduction of a pure state because it is a vector state, and the result is such that reduction is absolutely non very non pure state. In physical terms, it is called a kind of maximal chaotic state. So you see that the, sec the, the next important ingredient in the classical picture is lost. But I, I think that from technical point of view, this is the biggest difficulty. Namely, the, this is uh, again a well known result from general sort of cyst algebras. And when we have a cyst algebra, a state space is a simplex, it is equivalent that cyst algebra should be a billion. So you see that when we have a geometric feature of a set of states for a cyst algebra, which is simplex, that means exactly that we are coming back to the classical picture. And uh, what is the consequence of that? That when we are speaking about quantum states, so really quantum states, so there are plenty of uh, decompositions. This is just to provide you a definition of what does it mean in general as simplex. But this intuition is most important in this lecture. That uh, this, well, it is, should be simple to get into a, a example should be simple to get intuition. So it is two dimensional picture. And when we have two dimensional ball, and two dimensional ball is not simplex, it is 
and, uh, and that means that it is a quantum world in some sense and a triangle is a simplex and it means that it is a classical world. So you see from the geometrical point of view there is a big difference. And, and what is the consequence? That when we have a state in quantum theory, in general this state can be decomposed in many, many ways. Contrary to the classical situation. I told you that I will speak about uh, uh, two measures of uh, entanglement, coefficient of quantum correlation, entanglement of formation. And uh, the second one, so the entanglement of formation uh, uh, needs a measure which is supported for, which is supported on extreme points. And uh, in general, the subset of extreme points exhibit, uh, exhibits bad theoretical, uh, measure theoretical properties. And to avoid this, one can use so-called reverse separability condition. And uh, the good message from physics is that when we are describing quasi-local algebras, which are describing physical systems, this condition is usually satisfied. So, because the procedure for quantization seems so, so easy, so we had in a classical picture coefficient of correlation. So the first question is, we can just rewrite this uh, definition using, say, the fact that now the average of observables does the value on the state. So again, we are getting a good number. This is, you can say that it is nice measure of correlation, but the point is that this, say quantum uh, coefficient is not able to distinguish, to distinguish correlation of the quantum nature from that of the classical nature. And because of that, there is a necessity to look for new coefficients. So what we should do? The basic idea is taken from uh, this Cadison Ringros example. We are looking, we will, we will looking for a separable approximation. So having a state, we will look for a separable approximation. And, but the point is that in general, as I just told you, a state will have plenty of decomposition. So as in the first step, we should have a kind of a recipe in which we can go from the set of states of the big system to the set of states of subsystem. And we can do this using so-called restriction maps. You see that such a restriction map is well-defined map from the set of a uh, set of all states on the big system from to the set of states on subsystem. And again, you can check, well, when we are speaking about topology, we will speak about weak star topology and, and with respect to this topology, these maps are continuous. But you see, the point is that when we start with, uh, say, a fixed state, then such a state can be decomposed in many ways. In many ways, in that sense, that we can find mm, a subset of measures having a fixed bar center. It is written here. And in general, it is a big, a big set. So we are having a fixed state. We are taking a measure from this subset. And then we, are, we will produce in that way a measure on the borrow, on the borrow structure of the subsystem. And then the point is that we are looking for separable approximation. And we can do this in the following way. Then having a, a measure 
from here we are producing two measures which are defined on the set of subsystems respectively one and the, and the second subsystem and then we can produce a new measure but on the product structure how to do this namely firstly let us consider the situation where probability measure is finitely supported so this should be of that form and then we can produce using the restriction two measures and for example here this measure is living of the on the set of states on uh, associated with the first subsystem and the same for the second one and then we can produce such a measure see that we are using the same coefficients and then we have a nice measure on the product structure and then because any classical measure has a weak star of Riemann approximation pro property we can play the same game on the corresponding nets and this is done here the result is that we are getting a net of such measures which are living on the product structure and then we can show that there is a limit and then we are getting a nice measure on the product structure and this, this new measure will be responsible for a separable approximation of the decomposition given by a measure new and now in this we can define the following say quantum counterpart of a coefficient of correlations what is given what is written here we have fixed state omega and having a fixed state in general we have plenty of measures with fixed percent so we are taking one of them and here is nothing else but the composition of the original state and here we have a separable approximation of this decomposition and because here we have plenty of such measures we are looking for the best approximation so we should take infinity and so you see that we are in a sense faithfully followed Cardison Ringros idea that we are looking for a kind of a distance and it is possible to prove the following theorem namely when we have tensor product of two sister algebras then a state is a separable in the definition which was given some minutes ago if and only if this coefficient is equal to zero so the difficulty where is to prove that when this uh, number is equal to zero this this implies the separability of a state and uh, the proof relies on the study of continuity properties of this function and the proof is consisting on three steps firstly it is an easy task to show that it is again a compact set everything is in weak star topology then there's the mapping is weakly continuous and the rest easily follow from the classical Weierstrass theorem that then infinity is attainable and when we are putting that this coefficient is equal to zero and then we have this equality and this equality means that we have a separable approximation which means just a separability so you see that in that way we can say that what is outside the subset of separable states is really something new and the, the, is stemming from the quantization procedure so we can call it this kind of correlations quantum one, quantum correlations a few words about uh, the second option when we are playing a game with a von Neumann algebra well this is the two options the first indirect way when we have such decomposition uh, which is done using the powerful machinery of sister algebra 
then uh, it is necessary to check that this composition is consistent of normal states. So it is a difficult task. But the second option tried to find a direct way, but for me it is an open problem. Because there are some, as is written here, some big problems, especially because uh, we should change topology and then uh, we have not such nice properties which is for restrictions map and then for definition of uh, measures on subsystems and uh, uh, measures on the set of states of with associated with subsystems. Now, the second one measure which I want to discuss here is entanglement of formation. This is uh, this was introduced by Bernard Dificent or Smolin and Woodhouse, and this is a very general definition and now we can see what we have in this definition. Here should be a very specific function. It should be concave, non-negative, continuous. But this is extremely important, which is equal to zero only on pure, only on pure states. So when we are again taking a state then uh, again, such a state can have uh, plenty of decomposition, like in the previous case. And because of this property, we should, we are looking for, not for a decomposition, we are looking for a good decomposition, which is supported on extreme points, on two states. And I just told you that in general, in general a subset of extreme points you can expect has uh, not nice properties because it is necessary to distinguish bare measures from molar structure, bare structure from molar structure. And the life is more, much more easy when this Rouet's condition is also assumed. And this is the reason that we are just playing a game with a subset of states such that separability condition is satisfied. And this guarantee guarantees that this decomposition has nice measured theoretic properties. And then uh, one can prove again, nice theorem that this is a good uh, indicator of quantum correlation, namely it's equal zero if and only if this number is equal to zero. But what is nice from uh, when we are speaking about entanglement of formation, that it is not only a nice indicator of condition. Well, but firstly, sorry, let me just say the definition of Ruel's separability condition. That means that we are interested in such a star, a star algebra with the unit, such that, uh, and also uh, uh, in a subset of state space, such that we have such situation that we can distinguish a sequence of subsist algebras, which is denoted here. And this is subset is distinguished in that way that this union is big big in that sense that this union is dense in the algebra. But moreover, but moreover, we have such situation that each sub-algebra AN contains decided close separable ideal such that this property is satisfied. So you see that it's at the first look, this condition seems to be very complicated but furnishly, for examples taken from physics, uh, and this is due to Arrow, and that uh, for most models in physics, this condition is satisfied. And because of that, it is not bad to assume this condition for this uh, definition of entanglement of formation. Okay. So this is from the measure. But there is a very nice feature of 
and target of formation. You know, in physics, you are dreaming about experiment. So when we have <laughs> such new phenomena like uh, quantum correlations, and when we have indicated that uh, we can speak about quantum correlation, we are dreaming about uh, possibility to find an observable such that his, in principle, we can make an uh, experiment and this experiment will confirm that we have this measure equal to zero or not. And behind that is the concept of witness of entanglement. And seeing that we have the following features. Firstly, that this function is just a convex function. It is well known. But then there is an analysis so-called Bauer maximum principle. This is taken again from Bratley Robinson book. That means that in general, when we have a good topological space or a Hausdorff space, uh, locally convex, and then we let us consider a convex compact set, a, con a compact, a convex compact space. And then let us consider <coughs> a function, a real valued function, such which is defined on this, uh, on this space X. Then there exists extreme point in the X, not necessarily unique at which f assumes its maximum value. And because of that, this is the name Bauer maximum principle. But uh, there is another feature which is taken from the composition theory, namely then when we have a general sister algebra and when we are considering the set of states on this sister algebra. And when you are taking a measure such that this measure has a fixed barycenter, this omega, then the, the following properties are equivalent. Firstly, this measure, this set is, a, a, as I just mentioned, a compact and convex. So there are extreme points. And when such a measure is extreme, it is equivalent that fine continuous functions over these sets are dense in L1 space. So we see that it is very, very specific measure. And then you can again extract from Robinson Ratelli book that we have such situation that uh, Gelfand transforms are just the set of all affine continuous function on this set. So if we combine these properties, we can just can approximate entanglement of formation with a very specific some self-adjoint operator such that here is a Gelfand transform and because exactly of this property there's a possibility to find a self-adjoint operator and this is the algebra such that this difference is arbitrarily small. So you see that from physical point of view there's a possibility to find self-adjoint operator. Let me add that uh, the physical interpretation is such that all self-adjoint elements of cis algebra uh, are represented, uh, 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 represent uh, some observables. So when we have such a possibility that I can find a self-adjoint operator which nicely approximates entanglement of formation, I can dream about experiment in principle to find uh, such an observable which also will indicate entanglement or not. 
So this is more or less all what I want to say. Thank you very much for your attention. Maybe one of them, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Equality? Well, I don't know. I don't know because, you know, how it would be necessary to find concrete examples. Okay. Too difficult question at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, I, was, I should come. I didn't hear. There is a proof of existence of observables which approximate the Dagomas information. Are there any explicit constructions known? At the moment, I don't know. So, because of that, I told you, in principle, it is possible to, <laughs> to dream about such experiment. Maybe I didn't start at this point. Any more? Okay, if not, thank you very much again. Okay.